G'day YouTubers, Dano from Down Under. Um, as promised, I'm going to give you a try and make it a quick video of how to network Active Sky with your main P3D machine versus your client P3, well, client machine um, working with uh, two machines together and networking and uh, having your Active Sky Next run on the second machine and injecting weather onto the main simulator machine. This frees up your main machine uh, so basically less programs on the main machine is always a good thing um, so your processor can just purely concentrate on running the simulator without having any background programs running. Um, so ActorSky Next can run on its own on the second client PC and uh, happy days if you get it to work. Um, first thing the first is I'm not going to go into much detail but obviously we need to share all your drives on both machines between each other. Um, obviously the machines will be connected via a uh, networking cable i.e. CAT5 Ethernet cable or CAT6 cable and that cable will be back of your machine to your router or a ethernet switch and then another cable going to your second machine so the hub is basically the communication point between the two machines and then obviously you will have um, you know two machines seeing each other so for example on my machine I'm on my main machine here at the moment but I can see my second machine which is flights in PC2 for example both in the home group and also on my network and obviously this machine is the machine I'm currently on which runs my main simulator this machine runs all my other stuff including Active Sky Next and um, everything else as far as my ProSim programs etc um, guys that haven't got a second machine obviously um, if you do ever upgrade and have a second machine one day even if you have a, a crappy old machine running around just for Active Sky Next it always better um, your flight simming experience so um, if you do have a second machine it's easily done uh, with a few well relatively simple steps um, Hi-Fi simulations do have the instructions for this and I'm going to try and follow them and show you guys uh, step by step how to do it um, so bear with us if I pause or make a mistake I'll try not to make a mistake this time since my other video was a bit glitchy and uh, a little bit um, unclear anyway here we go so first things first is sim connect the actual program which is basically given to you when you install active sky uh, on your default main machine in this case we're not installing it on our main machine we're going to be installing active sky on our second machine which is right next to me so treat it as two separate computers your second computer you run Active Sky, install it on your second computer, uh, and go through the install process on your second computer. Ac Active Sky Next is no longer installed on your main or server computer. Okay, you just have the simulator installed on your server computer only, and that's it. Um, so to access the files or the Sim Connect uh, execute programs quite easy on my, on my basically on my flight sim 2 computer which is next to me um, in my local disk the same as hi-fi would put it in a default spot C program files and here it is here and then you'll, you've all seen this before which is basically AS connect this installer has to be taken and installed on both your main machine as well as your client machine so take that installer drop and drag it out of there click, double click on it go through the install process on your main machine and then do the same for your client or your second PC okay so once you've done that you've installed AS Connect on both machines alrighty um, so let me just quickly yeah I don't want to run that I just want to delete this I don't need that on my desktop for now alrighty so that's the first step second step is there is another um, installer that you must install just on your client PC 
um, and that is basically for P3D users that aren't using NSX for example um, you need to access the FSX Service Pack 2 X Pack or Service Pack X Pack or whatever it is you can download that f separately Google it, it is available and it's just a separate service pack once you have these files um, obviously FSX users will not need to do this it's only for P3D only FSX installs um, this automatically when you do install FSX but obviously P3D um, it doesn't have this so you need this for um, P3D only so you can access the uh, the service pack 2 files on the internet and you basically want to get a hold of this file here which is another installer which again will be taken to your second computer and run it uh, run that installer once it's finished you're pretty much done um, so first thing install your sim connect exe on both client and server and then get your service pack 2 FSX in libraries the SimConnect MSI and install that on your client PC only okay this does not need to be installed on your main machine okay so that's your SimConnect programs pretty much sorted alrighty next stage I hope I'm still being fairly clear without confusing everybody um, these two files here are actually given to you when you install Active Sky Next. In this case, I've installed it again, like I said, on my second PC. Um, you go into the directory once again, um, which we were just there to access the SIM Connect under hi fi and P3D, and obviously, there I was just talking about that one you need this one now. Um, it's put in here by default when you install Active Sky Next on your client computer. Click on that and you can see that these two files uh, are basically given to you. Alrighty. There is a third file um, which you do have to uh, make yourself um, which is um, the uh, XML file which let me get back out of here and go back into where I was which is this one here alrighty I'll double click on this and open it with notepad and I'll let you guys pause the video and copy and paste all that information there um, and make up a, uh, a new file alrighty you save that as an XML file um, and that's basically that information there needs to be copied and pasted saved as an XML file and then you will have this XML document okay uh, make sure you when you do save it if it saves as a notepad file or whatever just rename it and make sure it says dot XML and it will automatically change itself okay so it must read .xml, not .cfg or .notepad or whatever. So change it to .xml and it will automatically convert to that icon there. Okay. So you've just made that XML file up. Um, basically, the first file you need to sort out is this file. This file, when you open it now, it will open in this format here, which is basically uneditable. You won't be able to edit anything in this. Um, so we now need to reopen it in Notepad again, or WordPad, um, so we can get an editable format. Um, reason for editing is we need to change this line here. That line there is basically the IP address of your server computer. Okay, um, your server computer IP address is easily found. Um, go to your internet connection down here, um, and right-click Open Network Sharing Center. Um, whoop, go back out of there uh, and go to change adapter settings there's my connection and click on status uh, and details and 
here you can see my IP address of my machine that I'm currently working on and it's the IP version 4 address. That address there is copied in this line between these two arrows right there. Okay. Once you've done that and you've got your IP address um, copied in there, close it, save it and that file there is now configured and ready to be put um, where it's meant to be injected um, <coughs> which has to go into your basically your, your app data file um, which is a hidden file again if you don't know what your app data file is um, you'll go into your flight sim computer where your um, p3d or fsx is installed regardless of what drive you've installed it on you'll still go into your local disk to access your app data file okay into your name app data most of you guys are familiar with this anyway roaming Lockheed Martin and in your prepare 3d and in here will be my sim connect XML file okay so I open that up and there you can see my IP address is my IP address that was just basically shown down here previously and it's ready to go take note of this number here which is the port number um, root just take note of that that has to be the same on the other file that goes on the client machine along with this as well so XML file sim connect is injected in your app data underneath your Lockheed Martin prepare 3d location once it's in there you basically forget about it leave it there it'll just do what it has to do to communicate with the client PC when it needs to um, that's pretty much first file configured and put in place where it needs to go. Um, second file is the sim cfg file which basically is um, actually so no I'll lie I'll, I'll go with this one first guys this sim ini file um, which you get from your p 3D um, Active Sky Next directory when you install it you'll open that and it reads a whole lot of interesting information and again this information is untouched you don't have to do anything about this file all you need to do is make sure it goes in the right spot um, that file is basically done uh, put into the um, client's PC uh, position so uh, we need to take this file copy and paste it in the correct position on the client PC so if I go into my client PC which is basically in my case PC2 um, I can actually access it here I have got it under my documents and it sits uh, it's making a lie of me sorry guys it's the configuration file that sits here so that file um, sits in there that configuration file uh, let me go back and explain exactly what I've just done um, my mistake configuration file goes to the client PC the sim connect INI file stays with this PC um, so these two uh, the server PC this one is the client PC I'll get back to this one the client PC configuration file you need to open that first we can open it in your main server computer or your, or your client doesn't really matter um, and again there's your address for your server computer that needs to be changed and you'll notice that port number that I told you to uh, remember on that last XML file is 500 as well so that is by default you don't have to change that but this here you will have to change again to your server IP address once you've done that this job this file gets copied and pasted into your my documents folder of your client PC which is 
right there. Okay, this is my client PC and my documents folder, so PC2 under my documents and simply place it in the my documents folder. Uh, again, we're checking to make sure it reads the correct information and it does. The port is the same, the IP address is the same and we make sure that it reads IP version 4 and we're pretty much done. Um, that is the client configuration file and that file talks to the XML file on the server machine and that's how they talk to each other. So these files are pretty cool pretty much. Alrighty. The last file um, which I'll go back to which is this one the INI file. That file is the unchanged file. You just literally just need to put it in the right spot. Like I said, server, server, client. This one here is the last server one. So at the end of the day, that there again goes under my documents of the server computer this time. You'll find a P3D version 3 files that automatically puts that file there and this is obviously where you save your flights and all the rest of it and that's where this file goes it'll sit it'll sit basically in here and again you leave it alone you don't touch it and you're pretty much done guys that's pretty much all you need to do to set up a ActiSky networking on a client PC so when you test for the first time you should find you'll run your p3d here and on your second computer you will find active sky again booting up separately um, it should connect uh, if you do exactly what i've just told you to do you'll find it will connect and p3d will be connected um, that's pretty much all you need to know guys I hope this was a good tutorial how to do it um, like I said I'm not really the best in video editing and all the rest of it but hopefully you understood what I've just told you guys and give it a shot if you've got a second PC handy it is worth it and definitely uh, get Active Sky working on a separate PC because it will free up your frames uh, on your main PC and uh, basically uh, dedicate your main PC just running your simulator only which is always a good thing I'll catch you later guys see you next time